Welcome to Marriage University. My name is Tina Heisman. I'm a certified master life coach specializing in marriage. The topic for today's podcast is a warning about the five love languages. But before we get started, I want to let you know I have a private Happy Wives group on Facebook where you can come to get inspiration for your marriage. Search the Happy Wives community in the Facebook search bar or head on over to my website, tinaheisman.com, and click on the banner at the bottom of the front page. Also, I have created a free download called the Marriage Makeover Guide. It's a guide to help you make over your marriage into a happier, more joyful, peaceful place. I like to refer to it as a solution tool you can use to solve problems in your marriage. So visit my website to download it. Now let's dive in and talk about my little warning about the five love languages. Today I have a personal story for you about the love languages gone crazy. I told it in public this week when I spoke to a MOPS group, but that's the first time I shared it because it's so new. But before I share it with you, I think we should do a quick recap of what the five love languages are. So they were created by author Gary Chapman. He's also a psychologist. And the premise is that we all have an internal love tank that needs to be filled up. And there are five different primary ways to fill up that tank with love. They are quality time, words of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. So Dr. Chapman says each person has one primary and one secondary love language, and that we should speak the primary love language of our spouse most often, and also sprinkle in the others. So, What's important to know about this is that people tend to give love in the way they prefer to receive love. So I think you can see this probably could cause a language barrier in many relationships because oftentimes husbands and wives do not speak the same love language. Of course not. That would be too easy for us to speak the same language, right? We are put on this earth to learn and grow, and this is one of those ways that we can do that. And so the thing is, it's possible if you are not feeling loved by your spouse, that it is simply because he's trying to show you his love in the wrong way. And it's probably the way that he likes to receive love. Interesting, isn't it? So it's really important for couples to learn each other's love language. So you can do that by reading the book. And I highly, highly, highly recommend reading the book. It's a great read. It's a fun read. It's very practical. It's written in a conversational style. And a lot of stories are used throughout the book to help illustrate the teachings. And so I think you can really relate to it very easily. So ideally, both you and your husband would read the book. But I know that it can be very difficult to get men to read books sometimes, especially about self-help things. So there is another way that you can find out your husband's love language, and that is that there is a quiz online. So you can just Google five love languages quiz, and both you and your husband can take the quiz, and that will tell you what your love language, what your love languages are. So then once you figure them out, then you'll be able to speak your love language of your spouse more often. I really love this theory because You know, there are a lot of marriage theories out there. This one is so simple and I have literally seen it transform marriages. And just just knowing that your husband is trying to tell you that he loves you, he's just doing it in a way that you're not noticing because it's not your primary love language. And so that just makes you feel so much better, right? To know that. And so getting on the same page with this can be so rewarding in your marriage. And so just so we're all on the same page today, I'm going to briefly describe each love language to you. And I mean briefly, just quickly, just so you have an idea if you haven't read the book yet. So quality time means spending one-on-one time with your spouse where you give him your undivided attention. So if your husband's love language is quality time, you can ask him what types of activities he would like you to spend time with him doing. Maybe it's going for a walk or fishing or hiking or skiing or watching a football game. The important thing is that he feels like you're focused on him, that it's intentional, that you are doing the activity together, 
And that is love for him. That makes him feel love when you will give him your quality time. So next up then is words of affirmation. So these are verbal compliments or words of appreciation. So they're best expressed in just simple, straightforward statements like, you look really hot today, or I love how you handle that situation with the kids, or thank you so much for taking out the trash, right? Even little things. The thing with words of affirmation is that we want to affirm our husbands for the men that they are and also appreciate them for the things that they do. This this right here, if this is your husband's love language and you focused on it, you would see a huge transformation in your marriage. It would be awesome. And so you can express words of affirmation in different ways, face-to-face, via text or email, or even a love note or a handwritten letter or card. But what's most important to know is that if your husband's love language is words of affirmation, he needs to hear those positive words in order to feel loved. And keep in mind, since words are what build him up and make him feel loved, negative words will feel doubly bad, right? If if that's his love language. So you'd want to make an effort to speak fewer critical words and more words of affirmation if that's his love language. Okay, next up is acts of service. So that's doing things for your spouse that he would like you to do. So it could be running errands for him, like maybe picking up his dry cleaning or something like that, or maybe picking up a task at home that he hates. You know, that just, that would really show him love. Like if you know he hates cleaning the toilets, like if you did that for him, that would be awesome. Or um, even things that maybe are, that he doesn't hate, but are important to him, like watering the flowers in the summertime is one thing that I try to help my husband with and he is always so happy when he comes home from work and I have taken that off of his plate for the night so that's acts of service and so when our husband has the love language of acts of service they feel most loved when we do things to help them so nice things for them all right next up physical touch so You'd think this one's pretty self-explanatory, but it really means more than just intimacy in the bedroom. It also involves holding hands, kissing, sitting close to each other, touching your spouse as you walk through the room, you know, just like maybe touching his shoulder or his back. You know, um, intentional greetings when you're coming and going, like, you know, a hug and a kiss when you're leaving for the day and returning home for the day. And also even playful smacks on the butt will do that can that's something that a lot of physical touch men will do and women might be off put by that and think why are you doing that to me but it for them like that's an expression of love it's it they're you know touchy feely physical touch is their thing i've even had moms of boys talk to me about like how their husband does a lot of like wrestling with the kids and tickling and stuff like that but that's their love language that's how they're expressing their love and getting it out and so The important thing with this love language is that it's literally the physical touch of another human being and your physical touch that will make him feel most loved. And finally, last but not least, receiving gifts. So if your husband's love language is gifts, he will feel most loved with a tangible, visible symbol of love. It's like something he can touch or hold in his hand. And so this is where my warning with the five love languages begins. And my warning is this. You might not want to try to outdo yourself when buying gifts for your spouse if love languages, if his gifts are his love language. I'm sorry, that was a mouthful. But trust me on this. Things might change more than you think on this. So this is a love language I was missing early in our marriage. I would come home from my shopping and my husband would say, what'd you buy me? And I would laugh and say nothing. And I thought this was just playful banter between us until I read the five love languages and realized this is his love language. So now I almost always try to bring him a little something from the store. Little things like wasabi peas or beef jerky or candy that he likes. And I write his name on it and put it on the counter and make sure that the kids know this is dad's special gift. So take note of that, I don't just put it in the pantry. I like leave it out so it's a gift, it's being presented, right? You could wrap it if you wanted to, but Um, I just write at it and that works. So that's like everyday little things. And then for like the birthdays and the Christmases and Father's Days and things, um, 
I try to you know, do something a little bigger, right, for those, for those times of year. And um, I want him to say, wow, you know, when he opens a gift. And I might have gotten a little carried away. Um, this wasn't so bad. One year I saved some extra money on the side so that I could give him $1,000 cash so that he could buy a new TV. And, um, you know, I knew that he would want to pick it out for himself. And so, like, I saved the cash on the side so I could literally give him $1,000 in cold, hard cash. And I just, I will never forget the look on his face. He was so happy, so excited. He went shopping the very same day for his TV, and he was so happy. And he said it was one of the nicest things that anyone had ever done for him. And so the funny caveat that happened with this gift is that it turned into him remodeling the entire family room to accommodate the size of the new television. No lie, no joke. That is truly what happened. He blames me and the TV to this day for having to remodel the family room down there. So as if that wasn't enough for me, in order to outdo myself, to get him to say wow again, for his birthday last March, I gave him a one hour introductory flight lesson because flying an airplane was something on his bucket list, and so I thought it would be great. And oh yeah, you should have seen the look on his face when he opened that gift certificate. His jaw literally dropped. I have a picture of it, I actually got a picture. And I can't tell you how much joy that gave me seeing his reaction, I totally nailed it. It was so awesome. And so a few weeks later, he went and took that flight lesson and he loved it, he loved it. And that is where the serious part of this warning comes in, girls. Because at the time of his birthday and around all of this time, we were planning a renovation of our master bathroom. We had gone to the store and picked out the tiles and everything. So that was gonna be like our project for 2018, remodeling our master bathroom. But Paul loved that one hour introductory flight lesson so much that he said, I really, really want to become a pilot by the end of the year. I really want to do this. And so what that means financially is we probably can't do the bathroom. It was like heartbreaking, you know what I mean? In that respect, because I was so ready for my bathroom to be remodeled and we had the tiles picked out. But the joy of seeing this gift that keeps on giving and him crossing something off his bucket list and really the everyday happiness and joy that this gave him was totally worth it. You know what I'm saying? Like the bathroom will be there next year, but we live like two minutes away from an executive airport where he can do his training and he was so excited. And so this year in 2018, no, I am not getting a remodeled bathroom, but I am getting a pilot. How cool is that, right? So my friends, be warned. Speaking your husband's love language could transform your life in ways you would have never imagined. And they will be so good. There will be so many good things that will come of you speaking your husband's love language. Things you could never even imagine. And so that's what I have for you this week, girls. I hope that it's inspired you and maybe gave you a little giggle about how things worked out for me. But if you need some help with speaking your husband's love language or working on your marriage and some accountability, I would love to work with you. I want you to have all these good feels in your marriage and, and it is possible. And so if you would like a little guidance and accountability, just visit my website to apply for a complimentary, personalized, healthy marriage planning session. I have some great tools to help you along in this journey and I would love to work with you. So thank you so much for listening in today. Please let me know if you have any specific questions. And remember, I have created a free marriage makeover guide to help you fix any challenges in your marriage. Just head over to my website, tinaheisman.com to download your copy for free. And don't forget to join the Happy Wives community on Facebook. And of course, I'm here to talk to you one-on-one -on -one if you need that support as well. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you next week.